Howdy folks and welcome to the 2020 River City Open. We have got round three, back nine, final nine hole conclusion action here. Big hoser commentary, Jeremy <laughs> Colling, Thomas Gilbert, it's your birthday, you're 21. How does that feel? It feels about one Great. day that older is... than yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> this has been the Marweed Show, folks. Andrew Marweed has played phenomenal disc golf. His mistakes have been small, his putts have been great, and he has got a four-shot advantage over Chris Dickerson heading into the final nine holes of the event. Let's get straight to the action. Hole 10, 744 foot, par four. The shot is just a layup right around this range right here, and then it's a pitch across the water to a basket that is on kind of a slopey green. If you go long, it will be a scary putt back towards the basket as the out of bounds line is about a foot and a half off that water line. Nate first after his lone birdie on eight and then the thumber birdie on nine. And that's in a decent position. Yep. And you're going with that FD once again. Looking to repeat round one's result. And this looks perfect. Oh, yeah. And that's pushing the right front the edge, way. but that grass yeah. is really grabby. You're not going to get any skips off that. Oh, you're going for the thumber play. Yeah, I felt like that was a nice, safe way to get over that tree mm -hmm. and then yep. just skip right, right down to the ground. Chris with a nice low ceiling PA3, I guess. Is yep. That, yeah. Yep, PA3. And he'll be first on his approach. Yep, looking to throw his FX2, flex it over to the right side and bring it back. Really flexing it. Yeah, that was so wide, so much trust. Wow. And this and thing just got a nice skip. But look at that. Scoot, just circle's edge. Here you've got your big germ thunderbird one of the prettier ones i've ever seen oh thank and you and that was one of the least pretty shots i've ever seen but it looks good <laughs> enough yeah it was <laughs> overturned and somehow found that back corner safe not too pumped with that throw but it's safe so that's good and nate and too high here and this looks like it needs to push Ooh, and that I don't know. Did he cross and bounce there? We we need to go up there and look. Okay. Because we, are, we aren't quite sure. Yeah, that's really hard to tell from this we side. We had a of really bad island. angle. Yeah. From that catch cam, it did not look like it crossed and bounced. No. But from our angle, we... It, those, those trees, you can't really tell which ones hang over the water and which right. ones don't. Oh, wow. Yeah. What a putt. That was incredible. <laughs> Having to go Anheuser, yeah. that was a really good feeling putt after missing a couple shorter ones in the front nine. And Chris, no problem there from Circle's Edge. That is a scary putt for Chris, and he just stepped up and made it so easily. Yeah, same for Andrew there. And so after we talked about it for a while, we gave, gave Nate the benefit of the doubt, and he mo moves up for a short par putt. Yep. In that situation... You did the best you can with what you got, and with no spotter standing on the line. There was a spotter up there, but he wasn't on the line, so his yeah. it he was did, hard to really get, a, to get a good judgment the greatest it. call. Yeah. Hole 11, par 3, 414 feet, straight across the water. We are going to see Andrew go with a forehand. I, I'm i not sure if I buy the 414 here. Do you? Yeah, I, I don't think so. I think this comes in like 360. Yeah. Uh, definitely with the downhill yeah. play as well. You can just kind of let a disc glide down this hill. It really only plays, I would say, 350 mm -hmm. the most. I changed my game plan from round one after uh, seeing Marweed's forehand. It was inspiring. I wow. tried to do the same thing. Great shot there with your semi-overstable wraith. Uh-huh. It's the newest star wraith addition to my bag. Chris going mid-range. Ooh, that needs a turn. It's not turning enough, I don't think. Okay. But so it's luckily safe. gets mm -hmm. gets left of that tree. Yeah, that tree would have definitely spelled disaster. Mm -hmm. Neat. 
putting a lot of power into this shot. Yeah, and overturning. Some of those geese were in danger with that low ceiling. Luckily, the grass is thick enough to keep them in bounds. Mm -hmm. That sidewalk there is pretty treacherous. And long bid. Oh, oh. just missing that one off to the left. Now Chris here. Oh, he's just been a fraction off on his step putt. Yeah. And that is potentially another lost stroke to Marweed as he has this short putt. Oh, do. Oh, Jerem. Just a little lapse of focus there for yourself. Yeah. I don't know. Marwood, no laps in focus no. this weekend. And he's going to pick up a stroke on the card, getting the solo birdie. And that's going to be five shots yes. ahead of Chris. Wow. With seven to go, it's it's not over. No. But it's getting close to being over. Yeah, these, these next three holes can be a little treacherous. Yeah, he needs to get through Goose Poop Island. Yeah. Which it should be renamed. It should be renamed Goose Poop Peninsula. Let's just yes. agree to that. Yeah. Because that's what it is. Hole 12, 252 feet. Obviously, it's a par three. Two options. You're going over the water or going hyzer around the outside here. Yeah. This, this, yeah. this island is a little bit softer after the heavy rain the night before. Okay. I found a few shots from my card were sticking on the green where I thought they might have skipped off round one. And Andrew... And being such a small green, we do not have a catch cam on this hole, but just, it, would, yeah. it would just take up too much space on the tiny island here. Mm -hmm. That does go OB for Andrew. Yeah. This one does not go OB. This that was, looked nice. This was my blemish in round one. I took a five on this hole and made the correction there, and I'm happy with the result. Chris going super high, super wide. And get does nice. that stay in bounds? Oh, yeah. Okay. Safe Good and result. Yep. You probably see the spotter there? 20 feet from the pin. Oh, wow. Big slip there oh, from Nate. You hate to see it. And going to the drop zone. This is a really scary putt. And what a catch. <laughs> that, is, that is probably one of the best catches I've ever seen. On we're in Michigan. Catcher. I'm going to call that. That's a Calvin Johnson in the back end of the zone there. That's, <laughs> that is a one-handed grab for the yeah. touchdown. Marweed saves his par, and that's important mm -hmm. just for the accolade of going bogey free. Which this is one of the holes that could definitely you could a bogey could happen real quick. Yeah, I'm an expert at it. <laughs> Chris picking up a really good stroke there to bring it back to four. Mm -hmm. And that was a much needed opportunity for Chris, and he takes advantage there. Mm -hmm. Hole 13, 350 foot, low ceiling. The, those geese are always there, so you're going to have to throw over these geese. Um, and then don't worry about all this construct or all this damage here. This was cleaned up two days before the event. The hole has opened up quite a bit since then. Forehand hyzer is a great play. Also, backhand mid range up the middle. Those are the two plays you're probably going to see the most. Yeah. Uh, Just a celebratorily <laughs> awesome shot. <clears throat> Good to be lighthearted about your mistakes around the course. If you get too down on yourself, it can be hard to come back from that. Chris gonna go with his M3. That is keeping a little high, sneaky underneath the and limbs. look at that little. Wow. That was a great little redirect. The redirect was huge. I mean, it was still was gonna that? be safe. Okay. But that put it to 10 Part. feet as opposed to yes. 25, 30. And Andrew going with that 2019 Sexton Firebird so we can hang it over the water a little bit more. This looks like it's... Oh. It's okay. It didn't okay. kick back OB, but that huge tree is, is, is yeah. going to be right in his way. And Nate, uh, just not committing it. See if he can sneak. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a great result. Yeah, definitely. No skip there means that he'll just have... A circle's edge putt. Mm -hmm. You're giving another floaty Annie run. Mm. Skipping off the top of the basket. Luckily, sat right there, 18 feet behind. 
Ooh. And Nate. A little bit off there on his run. Wow. Andrew really tucked behind this tree there. Having to go to a forehand. Oh, wow. Oh, and I, down. I was really surprised by that. With wow. four strokes to play with on so few holes left to, to go so aggressive at that, I was... Mm -hmm. I was definitely surprised by that, but uh, he's got a tester putt for sure to not lose two strokes to Chris. Ooh. And just sliding that wow. in. And that's where that push putt really makes a big difference. If you're mm -hmm. a spin putter and you're nervous, that putt comes up short so often. Yes. But that push putt allows him to keep his arm swing consistent, getting it over the rim wasn't the cleanest most beautiful putt but it's in the basket mm -hmm. and he's only going to lose one shot to chris as he moves up for the short birdie putt and it's back to being a ball game now it's yeah. only two shots apart wow. and just when we just thought like or, or is it three, three. it's three, three shots strokes. okay so it's it's still possible but oh we got the graphic change here <laughs> okay 439 <laughs> feet the hole was changed just a bit so we're not gonna get uh, not put too much emphasis on the bad graphic. Yeah. It's actually a good graphic. Good now. graphic now. Good graphic. Chris Dickerson going with, you know what he's going with. You're the stats guy. FX2. FX2. And this looks to be well corrected from round one. Yeah. But that is good. 20 feet. I'm not trying to correct my shot from round one. I'm trying to do exactly what I did for round one. But I do what Chris did. We just swapped. <laughs> Chris and I did swap skis. Well, yeah, just turning that over, that is your more unstable Thunderbird. Mm -hmm. That's my, my main go-to. Just yeah. want to throw it flat, and I just put a little bit too much angle on that. And that's my last backhand on the round, folks. You don't have to see any more. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Andy making similar mistake, but throwing it a little bit lower. That probably would have flexed out if you put it just a bit higher in the air. And that right there if Marby doesn't make a big putt and then it is going to be down to two shots yeah oh wow that was heading straight out of bounds super fortunate kick there to just keep him to possibly save his par here that was a very strange release oh, from Marby. and look and at this that. look at this skip, double skip, skip. skips oh my gosh i hit like <laughs> was, 150 feet back of the pin that was a incredible shot I wonder if that was the play for him. I would have to assume it was because yeah. it worked out so well. But if it wasn't, then good on you because <laughs> yeah. it worked out great. Here you are going to give it another probably floaty bid. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was fooled by it. I had the slightest bit of tailwind. I'm not going to say that it really affected it that much where it would have gone in if it yeah, weren't that yeah. way. But it definitely it, knocked it down faster than I expected. And <laughs> for sure. Wegren to picking up the... A good par save. Unconventional par. Yeah. And then Chris Dickerson to bring it to a two strokes. Mm-hmm. With only four holes left to play. Yeah, and three consecutive birdies after Andrew's three consecutive pars. The only real lull that we've seen in Marweed's game so far this event. Mm hmm And these are not the easiest holes. I mean, it's not... This is certainly at 439 feet. Anything can happen. Nice clean up there from yourself. And Andrew will come here and do the same. Yep. Here it is. The final hole. Final four holes stretch here as we've got... Hole 15, 275 feet. Again, I think this play is a little bit shorter, maybe like 240, 250. Yeah. But there is danger to be had. Mm -hmm. Anything that goes out of bounds will go to a drop zone, and there is a lot of a lot of limbs that can catch discs in the way. Chris wow. is not worried about any of those. No, he's just throwing a perfectly controlled PA3, I believe. And here you are going Aviar X3. Going nice and high to avoid that tree there and floating it down absolutely perfect right beside the basket. Yeah, that disc really was my 
most valuable disc in the bag this whole week. Only failed to get up and down for either the birdie or par save every time I threw it besides once. So that was very reliable. And this has been <laughs> Marweed's most reliable disc. And naturally the top two players land right beside each other. Right on top of one another. Yeah, Marweed has been money with his mm. Firebird all week so far. Nate coming up quite a bit short there. Mm -hmm. Maybe trying to match Marweed's line. Yeah. Here he is for a, a long look. Uh, it's a little low there. Let's see Chris taking his time, going through that routine. Pulled it a little bit right, but that's enough chains to catch and draw it into the basket. Mm -hmm. Great putt there from Marweed as well. And that is a 50-50 CTP ah. for some good money. Nice. And I walked it off and I was like an ankle oh, apart. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, hole 16, 404 feet, par three. Oh, and oh, yes, that's Bryce right. Costin getting an ace on hole 15. That's right. Good shout out there. Good catch there from our stats guy. We got Kyle Klein in the booth today joining us. Kyle Klein also putting together a really nice round from the chase card. Chris needing the birdie here has to go perfect all the way through to have any chance, and I. He's gonna need a, a yeah. big mistake from Marweed here. Yeah, going with his F1, just pulling it out to the right side. This is a really tight pinch, and I believe this forehand opens up the line quite a bit. And that was another overturned forehand, a yeah. little bit too early. With the little bit of headwind that we have here, it really required a lot more power than it did in the first round when we were here. Mm -hmm. And Marwe, a little yeah. bit of a, maybe a slip or a misthrow, come up too high, but making the initial gap, and he's in no danger of a bogey, which is all he needs yes. to avoid at this point. Yeah. Big run up here. And that uh, just early release. That right side is so sketchy, being as close as it is to that tree. It's, mm -hmm. It opens up the fairway, but it's just uh, it's sketchy. Wow. I wonder if this is a metal flake max from from Nate. This is a super overstable disc. Yeah. And he's been throwing on a lot of shots here. I'm going with the mortar. Nice buttery up shot there, right to the basket. That is a disc that you can really trust. I mean, mm -hmm. had your name on it for a reason. <laughs> yeah, it's nice and overstable. Very good approach disc for any time the wind is up. And I got to throw a little bit harder. I, I definitely go to the mortar quite a bit. For sure. And Chris having to, I'm sure, reluctantly play for the par there. Just yeah. crazy things can happen. 17 for is sure. a difficult hole. Yeah, 17 Actually, is a very treacherous hole with that OB long. Mm-hmm. And actually, 17 and 16 are tied for the second hardest holes on the course, averaging almost 0.3 above par. And there you can see why, as Nate is going to take his bogey. And I'm just so pumped with that par. At this point, I'm, I'm definitely, we're, we're all looking at scores. I mean, Chris, yeah. Chris and Mar, we didn't understand that that's a battle between those two. But there's a jockey for position for the top five. Uh, even the top seven are all kind of really close to one another. So, hole 17, 363 feet, low ceiling, downhill, and then you come up to this green. The basket is right there on the edge of that hill. Anything with too much pace, you're gonzo in the water. Chris has that same F1 in his hand, just looking to lace this gap this can be a stroke separator and just never at any point was it not directly heading at that tree yeah. and chris knows that that is mm -hmm. a difficult result wow 
What star, a great forehand there. The star Wraith. And Andrew. Just playing this one wide with the wow. Firebird. And look at this thing. Hug these trees and skip back to the green. That is just. That is a great shot. That is so pretty. He really used every bit of that fairway. Mm -hmm. And that's a key shot. That's putting a nail mm -hmm. in the coffin. Yeah. I mean, if Chris isn't able to throw that in yeah. and Marweed makes that putt, game over. Here we are. Here is Chris giving it a floaty. Uh, maybe that yeah. is yeah. No, a accepting bit, your fate. Yeah, a little bit of that I could see. Wagrin accepting his fate as well. That's yeah. just too scary of a putt from that range. For sure. Here we go. We got Andrew to go up three strokes. And uh, it's just hard Yeah. No nerves for this boy this weekend. Yeah. And here I am thinking. There's no way you can miss this putt. See? <laughs> no way. You can, no way you can miss that putt. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Put it low enough that would have just fell in the cage, I believe. If but. I were half an inch further away, I would have hit the cage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but taking the birdie on 17, feeling good. Heading into 18. One of the hardest birdies to get, really, in the whole tournament. Not really a three-stroke separator, but potentially a single-stroke separator yeah. with a good opportunity. Yeah. This is a situation, really, where the top two have been decided. Yes. This is kind of a battle here for position for the other two guys. Uh -huh. You're definitely looking to pick up the birdie. You just <laughs> overturn it slightly. Yeah, and this is the problem all day. Almost all the forehands were overturned. Yeah. This is closer to what you want. <laughs> oh wow! As far as uh, and perfection and hugs that right side, power. missing that tree, yeah, skipping up there, and he's gonna have probably another one of those shots. Yeah, about that same distance, probably left. Yeah, that was a clean 360, 370 to the pin. And Dickerson, oh, I wonder, was he going for a roller there or just a flex shot? It was right in between. It's yeah. hard to tell. I think that was going for the flex shot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it looked to be his D2. Oh, and Nate just off in his release once again. If Marweed had gone first, those shots would have progressively gotten worse. Each player <laughs> down. But that uh, was not the case. Nate playing out high and wide yeah, left. Just... That's safe. He's in position to save the par. Yeah. Chris going back to that D2. Just trying to put as much power on this as he can. Try to get some sort of look. And this is just smashed. Totally smashed. Absolutely. That is a fantastic mm -hmm. golf shot right there by Chris Dickerson. Here you are with a tricky position trying to get up and down for that birdie. And I liked the angle, but that the, disc is just... Yeah, too understable. Yeah. Needed to be a little bit like the next click up and stability for the mm -hmm. roller would have maybe gotten me a little bit closer down to the green. And I realized at this point, Kyle Klein is in the clubhouse one shot ahead of myself in position for uh, in fourth place. Austin Hannum, as we see Marweed, I mean, what wow. a weekend for this guy! Uh, Just nailing all the shots. Austin Hannum shooting a 13 under course record. He is in the uh, clubhouse in third place. And Nate with a nice shot there. He'll have that putt left for par. And Dickerson, this is kind of trying to just do something cool for the oh, fans wow. and almost makes it. That was a great run. Yeah. And so this has got to go in. Yes. Ooh. That looked that looked really good. I was directly behind Jeremy here. Yeah. And that looked online for about eighty percent of the flight and just drifted off. But here's your putt for that. Tie for fifth. Tie for fifth place. 
respectable considering the injury yeah, that, that you had. It was a frustrating thing to deal with throughout the round, but I was happy with uh, battling through it. And mm-hmm. Chris Dickerson played great all weekend, bogey free. Yeah, just Incredible. didn't just didn't get as many birdies. Yeah, I mean that's all there is to it. He just didn't quite have the step putt down this week, and mm-hmm. Marweed was making putts everywhere. And this putt four par for Nate. And a little bit of nerves there on the final putt of the tournament. Mm. Just trying to get out of the way for the yeah. the champion, two time back to back River City Open champion Andrew Marweed, and and with that performance and that yeah. making that putt averaged the highest average of any player in the world this week yes. on National Disc Golf Week. 1060.8 average. All right, your 2020 MPL River City Open champion, Andrew Marweed. <laughs> really well done there by Andrew. And there it is, the final results. Andrew Marweed, five down the back nine, matching Chris Dickerson on the back. And there are, there's the leaderboard. A lot of great scores, double digits on this final round. A lot of players moving up there in position. Austin Hannum with that course record 13 under. Kyle Klein. Kevin Williams? Kyle Williams. Williams. Great play from those guys. Thank you so much to the Patreon for supporting Crew 42. Crew 42 set hike. (laughs) We'll catch you guys in the next one.